Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. Welcome to our CTSS Most Popular Cases. We have thousands and thousands of cases on CTSS, but if you look back and you say, which cases have people looked at the most? These are the cases. Is there a good reason? Well, they're probably great cases, or they have great teaching points, or they have something that is of great interest to people. So we have coming off four parts, 10 cases apart. So without further ado, let me get started. Case one. This is a patient with a pseudoaneurysm, just the elbow off the brachial artery. We do see lots of trauma, whether it's gunshot wounds or stab wounds. And brachial artery is a common injury. We look at uh, underlying trauma. We look at uh, the presence of associated hematomas nearby. But brachial artery aneurysms are indeed common. And this is just a really good example of a brachial artery aneurysm. You see this patient um, has a lot of high density material in the soft tissues. Now, in terms of brachial artery pseudoaneurysms, it can be seen with IV drug abusers. We've seen that. Gunshot wounds, most commonly stab wounds. It also can be seen in patients who have processes such as Ehlers-Danlos where you can have these uh, pseudoaneurysms as well. So just a very nice example, an outpouching. These will often be embolized. Occasionally they will be resected, but you can see the potential for active contrast extravasation. And this was one of the most popular cases. There it is nicely on the axial views. Now case two. This is a case of bladder cancer. Nothing very special. Uh, again, the importance of good bladder distension. We like to give patients 750 to 1,000 cc's of oral contrast before the study. Encourage them not to go to the bathroom. And so you can see bladder lesions as one of the things. The bladder, um, any little enhancement in the bladder will be uh, suspicious for malignancy. But this is definite wall thickening on the left side of the bladder. Very classic for bladder cancer. In terms of infection, you can get bladder wall thickening with cystitis, but it's usually more circumferential. It's not focal. And the thickening enhancement that you see here, including both the left and the posterior right wall, really a very classic for neoplasm, particularly nicely shown again on the coronal views. A really classic case of bladder cancer. In this case, we will also look upward, look for the presence of adenopathy, look at the kidneys, make sure we're not dealing with the transitional cell carcinoma. So this case of bladder cancer, you loved it. We love looking at uh, and early detection of bladder cancer is important to us. Case three. Well, what is this case? There's a cystic lesion in the region of the right kidney and right adrenal this was a patient who has an infiltrating tumor in the body and tail of the pancreas. You can see extensive collaterals because there's invasion of the patient's splenic vein and occlusion of the splenic vein. Uh, I guess maybe the focus on this case was the adrenal cyst or the fact that there were two pathologies. It's sort of a classic aggressive pancreatic cancer. On terms of the adrenal cyst, adrenal cysts are commonly water density, well-defined, no enhancement. Pancreatic cystic lesions, we go through a range from serous cyst adenomas and IPMNs, but also cancer can be cystic. One cancer, acinar cell, is probably the most common to be cystic, but any of them can be somewhat cystic in the sense of being cystic and necrotic. So you can see it very nicely in that example. Now case four. Looking at the aorta, you can see calcification of the aortic valve leaflets, but there's also soft tissue density, and that's non-calcified thrombus on the aortic valve. You can see it very nicely here on the axial as well. Coincidentally, I saw a case yesterday with really impressive thrombus on the aortic valve. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell between thickening and thrombus. A coronal view or an oblique view is going to be very helpful. Here you can see the view which shows not only is there a non-calcified thrombus on the aortic valve, but this patient has a bicuspid aortic valve. Bicuspid aortic valves more frequently calcify and more frequently will get thrombus. So a really nice example of showing you calcification and thrombus on the patient's aortic valve. Indeed, a very nice case. Now case five. Patchy infiltrates that look like COVID. Well, 
I think these days any type of ground glass or crazy paving type pattern you have to think about COVID pneumonia and for a while it was COVID every single case. Now with COVID being less frequent, particularly the new variants in terms of uh, infiltrates in the lung, you need to think of other things. Unilateral is a bit atypical in COVID, community acquired infections, viral pneumonitis are all possibilities. You can see in this case, multiple patchy infiltrates in the right lung. This was community acquired infection. There also was some infiltrate in the left base. But again, in terms of COVID infiltrates, this could indeed be COVID, though they typically have more of a crazy paving pattern to them. And here it is on coronal views, just a nice example. I think it's gonna be hard for us to uh, go back to saying other uh, etiologies for infection. These days you always lead, cannot rule out COVID or what's the patient's COVID testing. So just a very important case. And just a few more images showing you that. I think coronal views at times give you a nice look at the pattern of lung infiltrates as well as the distribution. Now case six, carcinoma of the tail of the pancreas with dilated pancreatic duct. I think maybe people like this case because you see a cystic component to the lesion and there's a faint calcification, which you can see right here. And so you really would look at this case and the first thing I would think about is, could this be a serous cystadenoma of the pancreas? They often have a Swiss cheese type appearance, which is better seen on venous than arterial phase imaging. And they have punctate central calcifications. Now, one thing that is helpful in this case, perhaps, is the fact that it's a dilated pancreatic duct. It's rare to get duct dilatation and distal gland atrophy with serous cystadenoma. It occasionally occurs, but is atypical. And so in this case, this was a carcinoma, an adenocarcinoma, simulating a serous cyst adenoma. Just a very nice example to again uh, rem make us remember that cystic pancreatic tumors do indeed occur, but we always think about serous and mucinous and SPEN and IPMN, but you gotta be thinking don't miss a, a cystic neuroendocrine tumor, typically rim enhancement, or a cystic adenocarcinoma, which was the case here. And again, that duct dilatation and glandular atrophy really help you out on the diagnosis. So just a really nice example. Okay, case seven, cirrhosis with large varices and portal vein thrombosis. I think all of us like to look at the liver. The liver is challenging. Often you see lesions that are classic, FNH, hepatic adenoma, hepatoma, things like that perhaps but you can get AV shunting in the liver, small aneurysms in patients with cirrhosis. You can see here, there are several small micro aneurysms off the hepatic artery. The liver texture is irregular. Now, obviously you're not gonna see the portal vein thrombosis or the venous changes well on a MIP imaging from the arterial phase. So when you look at the venous phase imaging, you see the uh, splenorenal renal shunting, you see the portal vein, at least there looked patent. Uh, you see the SMV, you see a gallstone. Um, but as you go higher up, now you can see the thrombus in the portal vein, you can see ascites present, you can see fluid around the spleen. So I think one of the things that we always need to look at is look at the portal vein. Portal vein thrombosis can be due to hypercoagulability states. It can be due to tumor extension like pancreatic cancer but also can be seen in hepatoma and uh, cholangiocarcinoma, often by direct tumor invasion. But also as part of cirrhosis, the portal vein gets compressed, it becomes irregular, and you can see thrombus in the portal vein. So that was a nice example. And here's just really showing you the impressive splenorenal shunting, the large collaterals for the gonadal vein in part. When you have cirrhosis and you have portal vein thrombosis, you indeed get very, very impressive collaterals. And here's just a few more images showing that. And here it is again. Again, making the point, you can see small aneurysms in patients with cirrhosis, and it can be a cause of uh, spontaneous hepatic bleed. Okay, case eight, ulcerative colitis in the patient's colon. Very nice example of loss of the haustral folds of the descending colon. I think what you always have to think about when you see something like this is, 
is this colitis, like infectious colitis, or is this ischemic colitis? It surely could be ischemic colitis because it involves the region of the splenic flexure, a watershed zone. Uh, one of the things you'll look at, of course, very carefully is look at the mesenteric vessels. Make sure the SMA and the celiac are patent as well as their branches. And then you look at this case and you see the loss of haustral folds. Uh, that's a very good pattern for a uh, disease like ulcerative colitis. Again, I would consider infectious etiologies. Pseudomembranous colitis tends to have an accordion type configuration, so that might be less likely here. But uh, ulcerative colitis is a good thought, or other infectious colitis, and I still would have at least made sure they considered the possibility of a bleed and ischemic colitis. Okay, case nine, colovesical fistula. When you see air in the bladder like this case, you need to first find out, has the patient been recently cathed? If they had a folian recently, that would explain the air. But if there's air in the bladder and there's been no procedure, then you have to have a fistula. You can have, yes, infection of the kidneys, like a emphyseminous uh, pyelonephritis, which extends downward. You can have emphyseminous cystitis. But one of the most common things you get is a fistula. And you can see in this case, there's thickening of the interior portion of the bladder. The prostate is enlarged. The number one cause of fistulae to the bladder, besides trauma or atrogenic, would be diverticulitis. When you have diverticulitis, it typically involves the left side of the bladder and anterior. And what you want to do to really detect the presence of a fistula is give rectal contrast as a good way of doing it, or you could do it with a CT cystogram and have reflux upward into the bowel. The best way probably is with rectal contrast. And here's just a nice example showing you the fistulous tract from the patient's sigmoid colon to the bladder. These patients will need surgery, and even in the best of hands, this has high morbidity and high mortality. So colovessel fistula due to diverticular disease. Again, just a really nice example. Again, trauma. Things that are on the right side are typically due to Crohn's disease, left side, diverticular disease. And just a really nice example showing you the fistulous tract from the uh, sigmoid right there to the bladder right at the dome. Very, very classic appearance. And just a few more images, and I think that's why people like this case. And the last case out of the 10 is an intracranial bleed. Well, we don't show that many head CTs on CTSS, so maybe people like that high density, the mass effect, some of the atrophy, just a very classic appearance of intracranial bleed. Intracranial bleed are typically non-contrast scans. Lots of work with AI. Companies like AI Doc, Zebra have developed FDA-approved technologies for uh, detection of intracranial bleed with high accuracy. And most of the time, those techniques are used for a triage. Not that radiologists can see the bleed, but if you have a long list, it moves it up to the front of the list, so it makes the diagnosis come earlier. So a nice example of intracranial bleed with vascular mapping. So that's the end of my first 10 cases. Take a look at our 18 anatomical selected categories of images on CT is Us. We add new cases almost daily, surely every week, and we hope you enjoy them, and we thank everybody who saw these cases and made them the 10 most popular cases. And I'll see you again soon. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CT is Us YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctsus.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.